continuing from here, this is the big picture of the ALU. Um, you can infect the ALU with viruses. <laughs> no, but um, and now we'll, we start gonna zoom in into the LU unit, into the shifter, um, and then see what those um, control signals are and how they're being connected together. So overall, the, um, the LU, the arithmetic. There's not much more. Uh, the LU, the arithmetic logic unit, essentially takes two um, number two vectors, A, A, and B. They can be um, as many bits as you want them. In our case, um, we're just talking about generic N bits. Um, in today's computers, we're talking about 32 bits, 64 bits. It will do some operation on them according to these signals here and it will output the result on the output G which is n bits wide as well plus some carry out um, from the arithmetic logic unit. Now you can already imagine if it was an addition operation um, then the carry out will just be the um, output from the addition operation. We don't know so much what it will be for um, other operations. Now there's few control signals that we can apply to this arithmetic logic unit. First of all, there's the mode select. This will select whether we're doing an arithmetic operation or a logic operation. Arithmetic is a sort of mathematical operation, plus minus. Logic um, is a logical such as and, or, not, x, or. So we will choose this using um, this signal S2. Each one of those arithmetic or logic can have four different operations selected by S0 and S1. For example, I might have a combination um, for plus, for addition, another combination to do subtraction. If it was the logic unit, I might choose to do an AND operation, I might choose to do an OR operation. Now, on top of these two signals, there's the carry in, similar to if it was um, just a simple error, to this whole um, arithmetic logic unit. Now, as we will see when we start designing it, we can start thinking about this carry in as being another control signal and therefore actually extend um, the possible operations from four different operations with two bits to eight possible operations um, if we treat the C in as if it was another um, select control. Um, and this is what I said. Let's start by looking at how we're actually designing our arithmetic circuits inside the LU. So just to um, so just so you can imagine how the things are broken into. In the function unit, we have the LU and the shifter. The LU is divided <coughs> into another two parts: the arithmetic circuit and the logic circuit. Now we're dealing with the arithmetic circuit there. In the very heart of the arithmetic circuit, we just have an n bit parallel adder. You can imagine this adder to be just like your, um, the adder we talked about last week, the ripple carry adder, that has n stages to it in order to produce, to take two inputs, x and y, both of, um, with n bits, and to produce the result, x plus y plus, well, the carry in that's coming into this. And notice how I'm saying plus rather than or now, because now these pluses do actually mean plus. They don't mean ors. Um, and it will make the distinguish, uh, distinction between um, plus and ors. Now the result uh, might have a carry out. It will uh, propagate out. And this is uh, this carry out coming from the ALU. Now a simple error is not quite so much um, an arithmetic, arithmetic circuit just yet um, because it just, it's an adder, it's not um, a whole arithmetic circuit. But we can start manipulating um, our inputs um, x and y 
in order to give us different operations. Excuse me, this is what I want. The way I will approach it, I will connect the number, the data A, into my X input. And I will connect the data B through some combination of logic that will um, steer using S0 and S1 control lines to manipulate the second operand of the adder. Now, using um, two select lines, there's really four different um, combinations that I can make my um, logic do. And this is the kind of stuff that I might have in this um, logic unit operating on the operand B. I might want to steer it to be um, all zeros, meaning ignore B altogether, and I will um, keep referring in fact to make it easy. Let's see if that works. Yep. So essentially what I'm doing, I'm manipulating B using the select lines in order um, to output um, the input, in order to output from this um, B input logic into the input Y of the error. I can choose to ignore B altogether and make the Y input um, be all zeros. In this case, here we'll just add um, A plus zero, which is A. On the other case, which is if we have a carrying um, one, we'll have A plus one because the B is zero, which will correspond to either transfer A as it is or to increment A by one. Increment is actually quite a common function um, in computers. How many times did you have in your C programming um, for I equals something, I is less than something, I plus plus? This increment of I, it's, uh, it happens so commonly that having an operation in um, ALU and, and making the whole process much quicker will actually um, help us. The other option is to just let B propagate through as it is. Um, and this is this option here. In this case, if there is no carry in, I will just get um, A plus B um, at the output of, the, of this um, arithmetic circuit. If there was a carry in, then I will get A plus B plus 1, which doesn't have a name to this operation, but um, it might come up sometimes and the compiler has the ability to actually choose um, this operation. The other manipulation I can do is to invert all the bits in B. And this is when it gets interesting when I'm applying the carry in one. And this is how we um, build a subtractor in last week's lecture. Because not B plus one is the two's complement of a number. The two's complement of a number essentially is the negative of this number. So if I take the two's complement of B, essentially what I have is A minus B from this operation. If I didn't have a carry in, essentially what I'm getting is um, A plus not B. Um, so A plus the ones complement of B. The last option is to have uh, Y being all ones. So ignore B altogether, set all the inputs to the other as all ones. If you've noticed it, and if you know, then I'm telling you now, a binary number that is all ones in two's complements is the number minus one. No matter how many ones you put, this will always evaluate to decimal minus one. And this will then give us, if there's no carrying, a plus minus one is a minus one, so um, we have a decrement on a. Or if we had a carrying of one, essentially we're having a minus one plus one, which is just another transfer um, of a. So we do get this transfer function um, twice, but this is a byproduct of design of this um, arithmetic circuit, um, and it's not a problem. You can use either one to um, transfer a to the output. And this is what I said, even if we have two select lines, using um, C in the carry in being either zero or one will essentially give us double the amount of operations and we will get eight different operations 
from this circuit. So this is the idea behind this. How do we go about designing it? Well, we can just put it all in economy. So we'll put all the different um, options and I will use, I will design a bit by bit um, circuit for this thing. So if before we were talking about an n bit um, arithmetic circuit, now we'll show you how to manipulate um, the input y on a bit by bit basis. And then we just duplicate the same circuit um, as many times as we need. So we have all the different options for S1, S0, and the bit B. So for every um, operation selection that we have, B can either be either 0 or 1. We have the four um, different operations that we might want, either all zeros, if you want uh, to transfer B as it is, if you want to invert B, if you want all ones. We will then um, come up with a circuit for Y, or economy for Y, as a function of my select, 0 and select 1, and my, um, and my BI, I stands for the particular bit that you're using. And you can come up with this equation. What does this equation look like? Does this remind you of something that we've seen before? Hi? A JK flip-flop? Not quite. XOR? Someone said XOR, but it's not quite an XOR. Huh? D flip-flop? It's not a flip-flop. No, we, we said it's not an XOR. Hmm? Ah, very good. It's a multiplexer. <laughs> How do you know? <laughs> this is really um, the same equation of a multiplexer, but what may have thrown you off is the fact that usually with multiplexes we have you know S being the select lines and then um, either I being the information lines or D or something. We're here, it's actually we, we shuffle the um, signals around and we have our B as our select line. Can you see this? Um, and then S0 and S1 as our um, output. So if B is 0, this will be zeroed out and then S1 will be selected um, to the output. If B is 1, this will be um, selected out and then S0 will be um, output there. Which is why, so the S1 is connected to 0 and S0 is connected to 1, right? It's not, it's not a typo. This is uh, what happens. But it doesn't matter that it's a multiplexer because we're just going to implement it directly um, from the corner map. Now this is an example of a 4-bit arithmetic circuit. Um, I'll start off by saying you can extend this to be um, as many bits as you want. Each one of those um, stages is just identical to the other stages. So we have our um, full arrows here that we've um, created last week. We have our A signal, our A bit, going straight into the full error. The B um, signal goes through this um, circuit that we came up with the equation here. Now all these um, stages or bit slices are controlled by the same um, by the same select signals. So you have um, all the select signals S1 and S0 um, connected to all the end gates and then the corresponding value will propagate into your Y. And internally or not internally but between themselves 
the full headers are connected with the carry out of one full header coming into the carrying of the next full header. We do have the carrying coming into the first stage and we do have a carry out coming out from the very last stage. Now obviously when you um, when you want to design the bigger um, arithmetic circuits or in real processors when we usually have say 32 bits we won't use the uh, ripple carry um, carry ripple headers we will use probably carry look ahead headers where we'll group them in groups of four with the carry look ahead and then do um, a group look ahead so a circuit slightly more complicated than this but for now uh, the idea is clear that we can um, design one bit slice or one stage and then connect them together as needed. And this will give us that arithmetic circuit that um, so exactly this this will be this whole structure here. Any questions so far? The other one the logic circuit so we said our um, ALU arithmetic logic unit is combined is a combination of our arithmetic circuit that we just built plus a logic circuit. The logic circuit take, um, does one of four operations and or XOR and invert. Obviously um, and or XOR are all um, binary operations as in they take two operands. Not will only take one vector and invert all of its bits. And we need to build our logic circuit. The logic circuit can actually be implemented very, very easily using a multiplexer. And again, this is one bit of the logic um, circuit. We will need to combine n many of these in order to, um, in order to create the full word length of the circuit. Now, for different for different select combination, we will have different operations. And as you can see, I did do a bit of a change of notation to what I used to have for my ends and ors. This is for the obvious reason that um, or, for example, we used to use a plus sign, but now I will use plus to actually mean um, addition, so A plus B, as I've corrected many of you in um, tutorials. So now, now it's correct to say A plus B when you talk about adding two numbers and we will use this notation here to say A or B. Um, even though we won't actually use the dot operation in the arithmetic context, uh, just to be consistent with the change of notation, I did change um, the end operation here <coughs> as well. Now when you Uh, when you design this circuit, designing an actual multiplexer is probably not the most efficient way to go about doing this. It's probably easier or more efficient to actually take this tu truth table and put in a corner map and derive the actual circuit. Um, the, the ideas are the same. You will have you <laughs> you're gonna have your A bit and the B bit and the two select lines and you have some function of these two bits. Um, all right. Any questions so far? Good. Um, now what I want to do is actually um, stop here just because the rest of the material sort of flows together. So um, that was the particularly short uh, rest of the lecture, uh, but we'll continue this on Friday.